East uh, Bay Area Boulevard mm -hmm. out there, which is, of course, by Bay Baybrook Mall, came inbound, and we've already seen him at least hit one police cruiser. We don't know if he's hit anyone else at this point, but his car, as you pointed out, Mel, did have damage before he rear-ended that police cruiser. Yeah, yeah, that's what it looks like. Now, here we go again. Kind of hard to tell what model Honda this is. Uh, looks like an older model, however. Um, sort of smaller there, so, so very difficult to see. It does not appear as though there is a second person in the car. I-45 coming northbound. This is the Gulf Freeway. This has been a wild, reckless, dangerous ride. This is the scene, that silver car you see right there. This chase has been going on for quite some time. We understand they're on a... Or, or stop. You see all the police vehicles that are following this silver four-door that you see in your screen. We also don't know exactly how many people are inside this chase vehicle, but we're trying to follow that as well. The big question for police is why is the suspect running? Because we've seen it. We're now seeing a lot more cars, and that appears to be. Oh, there he goes again. Smashed police. right into that, that uh, SUV. Police okay, SUV is heading around, and it looks a portion of the bumper just fell off. He is now locked in. This is at the Broadway Bro. exit. And you Police can see all crew. the officers getting out of the uh, car. Weapons are drawn at this point. You yeah. can see they're going Pulling for the suspect. Out. He's now on the ground. Uh, looks like uh, they're definitely trying to subdue him right at yeah. this point. And it appears as though he is the only one. And Andy, um, I know you're trying to show us a fairly tight shot of him. But uh, as you saw just a moment ago, there must have been at least a half dozen or more police vehicles in hot pursuit here. And we see them now all gathering around him. Not much time for conversation. He uh, realized he could not get out on the, the uh, driver's side, so he tried to come out to the passenger side, and it was over in just like a matter of moments. He's got some severe injuries to his face at this point. Yeah. Um, uh, and well, he's rear-ended two vehicles at this time, so there was obviously a lot of uh, some violent collisions going on where he, that he was part of at this point. Well, and the lucky thing is that he did not smash Andy Bass into anybody else. Uh, he, he tried to rear-end that uh, police SUV. Uh, and then he spun around several times, but fortunately did not take out any innocent civilians who also happened to be on the road at that time. Here yeah, we go. Two collisions at this point. Here's a first uh, collision that he took out. Uh, this police cruiser here. That one looks like it's a, uh, can't tell if that's an HP cruiser or not, but. Uh, but he just wow. plows right into the back. And KHOU.com. Here. Uh, looks like police are going through his pockets at this point and uh, frisking him down. And, and also searching his car. Andy, um, you're able to have a much better vantage point than we are. Anything else that you're seeing? Uh, have they shut down traffic at this point? What? Andy, have they shut down traffic at that stop? Absolutely. They have shut down 45. The record just showed up on scene along with a lot of uh, activity going on here. Wow. And this is what's going to happen for rush hour and on inbound Gulf Freeway from anywhere, basically from the belt all the way up. They're going to try and see if they can get in front and perhaps box the vehicle in. HPD vehicle in front of the black sedan now. We don't know what that means. Let's see what, if there's a maneuver they have in place. Newsroom, we've got some breaking news that we're following. A chase on the north side of town. This on the north freeway frontage road headed northbound. Andy Bass is in Sky Eye HD over the scene. And Andy, we have seen this uh, person running since about two o'clock. We do not know why. We're seeing a lot of maneuvering there as we watch your shot. Uh, and tell us exactly where this is. Do you know at this point? Well, he just took up right off the northbound of the feeder road on the north freeway. I'm not too sure what's not the secondary roadway he's over right now, uh, but he's traveling at high speed of rate on uh, heading uh, eastbound on this little uh, service road right now. All right, we are hearing that this is eastbound on Gulfing. This is a unique chase because I know, Andy, you're just getting up there and obviously trying to stay over the scene. It's a bit of a challenge right now. Certainly widening out uh, might make that a little easier to follow. The hood of this sedan has been popped up over the front windshield. Somehow, this driver has managed to continue to drive for quite a few minutes with the hood of the vehicle up over the front windshield. And apparently, this person is able to peer out of just a small hole or an air intake area um, on that hood. But uh, we have seen some erratic driving, and Andy, as you are able to tell us, we have seen some pretty high speeds just in the past couple of minutes. Oh, absolutely, and like you said, that uh, that the uh, that the hood is uh, definitely up and blinding the person who's driving this car right now. High speed, you know, it's very hard to do high high speed on the secondary roadway, especially going in and out of traffic like he is right now. He just yeah. crossed over airline on this on this little service road right now. You can definitely see some cops in the backfield uh, just trying 
to uh, contain him as much as possible. But without being able to see through the front windshield, it's going to be very hard for him to imagine where he's going to. And we also want to make the point that parts of this chase have been have been quite volatile. We have seen uh, this person getting very close to police officers who had pulled over into a parking lot and were trying to stop the suspect who was running for an unknown reason. The person driving this vehicle got extremely close to those officers um, and, and really endangered them before taking off again. They also got them, uh, well, somebody actually had to dive out of the way. They actually ended up also getting this driver locked into a position for a little while and got it, this driver stopped. At that point, police got out of their vehicles and pulled their guns. Um, and again, this happening in northeast Houston, in the north Houston area, pulled their guns and then that driver took off again. Uh, Andy, we are seeing a, a much higher rate of speed at this point as well. And again, we have to keep in mind as viewers that most of that uh, view is blocked, that that driver is seeing very few actual um, signs and, and scenery there as they drive. And we are headed up to a, a highway here in northeast Houston. Is that right, Andy? It's very hard for it to me to tell exactly where we're headed because the choppers are getting okay. uh, right along that Heading, road. Headed toward the Hardy Toll Road. So as we get okay. close to that, we'll be able to tell whether or not this person gets onto the toll road there on another frontage road. And now this is a better view, as you can see, coming much, much closer. The cops are ramming the vehicle, and it's now losing control, fishtailing, and it looks like they have gotten this vehicle to stop. That person in the vehicle as we watch this, the hood over the windshield and a huge amount of smoke, Andy. It's difficult to tell where that's coming from. This area clouded in, officers surrounding the suspect's vehicle with their guns drawn. We have lots and lots of officers' cars, and uh, they're not going to take any precautions or, or any chances here just because of the actions that we saw out of this driver over the past 20 minutes. It looks like they now have that driver on the ground there, correct? Yeah, that is correct. They did. That is correct. They do have the driver out and on the ground right now. Okay, and as far as we can tell, just one person in that vehicle that we saw come out. I know it was difficult with all that uh, smoke that filled the air. Yeah, so far there was just one person that we see that was out of this vehicle, and that's that person in the orange. Okay, and they're going to go ahead and get this person into a patrol car. Uh, Andy, we also saw a whole lot of officers chasing this person, didn't we? Oh, absolutely. We counted at least 15 that were pursuing this uh, person. Okay, this, by the way, everybody, coming to an end at the Hardy Toll Road, southbound Cedar Road. Um, this is right where it's coming to an end. Again, this uh, suspect running for an unknown reason, putting officers' lives and certainly a lot of other motorists in danger. The good news is this case has ended. That suspect now in custody, and we'll certainly have a lot more on this coming up on Eyewitness News starting at 4 o'clock. In the meantime, we're going to take you back to your regularly scheduled program. I'm Alona Carson, and we'll see you on Eyewitness News at 4. This police chase coming to an end in Northwest Houston. We're going to have much more coming up for you on this story on our 4 o'clock news. This has been Breaking News from KPRC Local 2 News. We now rejoin our regularly scheduled program already in progress. Sure. Median areas uh, without much regard for the other cars out there on the roadway making its way back onto the main lanes of traffic and we've seen this person take some pretty radical and drastic steps to avoid those stop sticks as well. Yeah, exactly. It looks like it looks like the window's now open. He's messing with his side mirror there. Not exactly sure what he's doing, but you can see that hand there. Uh, what we can tell, that window was up earlier, and that's now down. And uh, as he concludes, I can tell you when the suspects are out, we had her scope up, kind of sway a couple of times. We don't know if he lost. I guess he would, has not lost the tire at this point. But it looked like it was very hard to maneuver that van there for a couple yeah, of Yeah, officers apparently watching one of the tires that they think is pretty low. It's difficult for us to tell from this vantage point, and especially at these speeds. Um, but you don't know how much control and steering and handling this driver has over the vehicle at this point. Uh, he has been able to maneuver around traffic, but as Eric said, some of it almost seems like it's a little bit wobbly and fishtailing. Pulling over onto the right-hand shoulder again, maybe just to pass that vehicle. And Andy, we've really seen these speeds pick up a lot just in the last minute or so here. 
again, that van now exiting off of the Southwest Freeway back to the frontage road. This is on, uh, this is the Bissonette exit, we're told, um, and it looks like he's going to be getting up to an intersection, definitely losing some of the handling capabilities of the van, which is certainly disconcerting given that this is such a heavy vehicle. We can see that it's looking oh. wobbly, crashing right through two vehicles right there, trying to keep going, and we see his hands on the steering wheel, and it looks like his tire may be flat. And and we definitely are seeing police rush in right now. He rear-ended that one vehicle, knocked the window out. Guns are drawn at this point, coming around to the driver's side, but could be hard to get that door open because that guardrail is right there. Looks like they're just going to yank him out the front window and get him down on the ground. Uh, three or four police officers trying to subdue him at this point in the grass right there, right off. You see a canine there off the top of your screen. Uh, they're uh, ready to be used if needed. And uh, it looks like at least uh, half a dozen HPD officers have him down on the ground and in custody at this point. And folks, I also want to give you some information. We just got into our newsroom. How this all started, we're hearing from HPD at 410 this afternoon. Someone called Houston Police saying, I'm following a vehicle I believe is stolen. This all started on East TC Jester at 18th Street and is now ended here. Well, you are seeing uh, what we're hearing from HPD that was a... Uh, a vehicle uh, burglary suspect that has now been taken down after uh, knocking it, rear-ending at least one vehicle. Just slamming through a couple of them, trying to get through and having no choice but to finally stop, surrounded by officers. This chase finally coming Correct. to an Correct. end at the 9200 block of the Southwest Freeway. Uh, as you can see, they are going to get this guy into a police officer's car very quickly here. This is the exit right at Bissonette. Um, and so this is going to be a, a major issue for traffic, though this is on the frontage road um, where he actually did exit and then stayed on the frontage road for a little while. They're going to do a very careful search of this person. Uh, and again, you get the call for a stolen vehicle, but boy, those charges are going to be upped quite a bit right now. Some of those officers congratulating each other on what was a pretty remarkable chase considering that hopefully the people in those vehicles that were just hit were not injured and we saw so many close calls. Yes, we did, exactly. Let's go ahead and get you back now to the end of the chase here as we saw. This is where he was coming up on that one vehicle, a little pop right there. You see the window gets shattered out. That car is sent off of that driveway. He slams into that guardrail. Again, it was just moments ago from Sky IHD. That's when the uh, patrol cruisers close in, guns drawn, and basically just yank him out of that driver's side window, toss him into the grass, take him into custody here. Let's just kind of watch this. Yeah, because you made the point that it was going to be difficult to open up that door, given that it was right up against the guardrail there. Close and look at the suspect. Looks like, of course, he has no shirt on. Yep, and they're going to try to get uh, get this person into a patrol car after they can run and drove southwest freeway outbound southbound at Bissonette. This is probably totally closed off by now. Matter of fact, if we uh, widen up our camera shot here just a little bit, we'll be able to tell if this is going to be a major issue for traffic. Um, because we're assuming at least right now that frontage road is going to be closed as they uh, work on this investigation. Yeah, nobody's going to be getting through there. We're going to get some more information about this, and we will keep you updated. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back. There he goes again over some grassy areas. He's been going in and out of mediums. There the police officers appeared to be taking shots at something. Uh, you know, you wonder if they, they took a shot at him because you clearly saw the gr gun drawn toward him. It appeared that, uh, you know, from, from our vantage point anyway, that, that that's what was taking place. He has been driving so erratically at this point that they're trying to do something. And here he goes again in another circle. And if police are going to be standing there again on the other end of that circle, you wonder what they're going to be doing. But he's made this circle at least twice now. So you, you saw the officer there, uh, and we'll take note of, of when that happened, and you, I just saw someone else jump off to the side as well, and as we continue to watch this van just driving so wildly on the north side, again this is North Houston, this is just south of the Beltway, as we saw the officer standing there with his gun drawn, and you see him making again another circle. 
We're losing picture here for just a moment, but just hang with us, and we're going to bring, you know, we're bringing it to you as we continue to watch this van, which is simply driving so erratically throughout the North Houston area. Again, it started in Southwest Houston, driving all the way nearly to Richmond on 59 Freeway, circling around, coming all the way back northbound, and he's been driving now for over an hour all the way northbound back into town on the nor on the beltway driving north on the beltway past past i-10 past 290 all the way swinging around past 45 all the way to the hardy toll road skipping the hardy toll road coming about uh, around and swinging back westbound then hitting the residential areas and you saw there in those pictures how he was driving in and out of the residential areas once we get our picture back here hang with us if you can we're going to be bringing that uh, to you again live. We've apparently had some uh, some transmitting problems, but we are effort. And now he's jumping a curb again. See a fire truck that almost lost before jumping up on 59 um, and headed all the way south down to Richmond, Fort Bend County. Now it looks like he is deciding to go this other way. We're trying to figure out, let's see what intersection this is. Whoa and police finally hit him there for the first time trying to stop him. And now he's headed back down the other way. You can see a lot of these officers just trying to get in place and it looks like it's a two lane roadway, but it looks like there was some sort of entrance. Okay, so he's passed all of those officers that were lined up there. You saw them lined up along the median to try to stop him, but he's not giving them much opportunity or time to get out and throw out spike strips. Um, we've seen a couple of law enforcement officers get out with, uh, we saw one with a gun pointed it at him, but it, barely. They have, they hardly have any time at all to get out and make any plans for um, stopping him. Right now, this looks like a pretty rural area. See that tow truck backed up? Spike strips again, didn't make it out in time. Now we're on Imperial Valley again. We believe this is Imperial Valley that we're on. Um, we've been on Benmore over in the Greens Point area um, towards Greens Road. He's approaching Greens again, and you see this officer right here above those trees, those spike strips. He decided to take the sidewalk instead of going over those spike strips. Um, they just can't seem to get those out there quick enough. Um, we know that he's been hit one time, this driver has been hit one time by an HPD cruiser. Um, they've tried the spike strips um, at least three or four times and have been unsuccessful. And he is traveling now, um, trying to keep up whenever he makes these U-turns. Are we on Imperial Valley? Or, or, he actually turned there, right? This shouldn't be Imperial Valley anymore. That, it looks like now he's turning down another roadway. He's made a left. Certainly anyone in this Greens Point area, Imperial Valley, Benmar, Greens Road area. Um, if you have any family or anyone who works in that area who may not have access to a television right now, you may want to call them and let them know what's going on just to stay in. Um, it's after lunchtime. It's 2.06 now. We believe this started at about 1.10, 1.15 is when we first started hearing it on our scanners all the way over in southwest Houston. This driver in this white Dodge Caravan. Um, we do have calls into HPD trying to figure out. Back off as much as they can. As much as they can, unless the person has been in commission of a violent felony, a felony with violence. Is that right? That is correct. And uh, the person that they're chasing right now is a suspect in a robbery, and so that's why they're uh, so close to him right now. Right tell, tell me what you know about this suspect. As he approaches an intersection, that's always dangerous. Right. And, and he may have lost one of his left side tires. What do we know about this suspect? As far as uh, the suspect goes, uh, the, uh, the the robbery, I believe, is uh, from a convenience store, but I'm, uh, I'm, details are very sketchy on that. But uh, as far as the uh, as far as the driver goes himself, uh, I want to say uh, probably uh, late 30s, early 40s. Okay, and it is a guy for sure. Uh, Brown, it's like trying to lose officers, but it would seem that the best bet is catching him in one of these lots or blocking off all the exits, like. Look like that vehicle tried to do there. Maybe he just came up on him too fast, not realizing what was going on. Now we're back out on the roadway. And we are in, again, North Harris County. Um, we've been in the Greens Point area for quite some time. And you can see it looks like we've been in the Greens Point area for quite some time. And you can see it looks like a lot of construction going on in this area. Some cones on the roadway, but that certainly has not stopped this driver. 
He's picking up the speed again. We have been following this um, vehicle, and police have been following this vehicle for almost an hour now. He just made a right-hand turn on Greens Road, um, staying in this area, just making a lot of U-turns and circling around. Um, you do hope that, or think that if he stays in this one area and just keeps making U-turns, that they have enough officers to throw out the spike strips or, or have almost every direction covered. And now he just made a right-hand turn onto another road in this Greens Point area. He's southbound on North Chase right now. He's headed southbound on North Chase um, in the Greens Point area. Now that, uh, about an hour ago, police began to chase in the southwest side of Houston, apparently on suspicion of burglarizing vehicles. I don't know if they, one more time, were crossing Ben Mar, and now another U-turn southbound on North Chase. So far, without any major incidents, the driver has been able to uh, go around. We hey, up. Thought maybe they would have stopped him here, but he got through that whole area, what looked like at least six cars, and he's pulling into some sort of driveway here. Um, if we can see, is that a parking structure or some sort of parking garage that? That he's pulled into right there. It certainly would not seem like an ideal place to get away. You can see the Wyndham Hotel right there just to give you an idea of where this is, that green roof at the right-hand corner of your screen, and he's pulled in. I believe this is some sort of um, parking garage, and you see other officers going in there slowly. I understand he is inside that garage area. The police, of course, have the entrances and the exits blocked in this area. You can see several officers around Houston and just uh, right around Beach Nut and 59 Freeway, if you can believe it. Uh, but we can't see. You see these officers running here. It looks like they may have had their weapons drawn, running towards the garage. You see right there, um, one off. It is by passing them almost as if he, they were standing still. If, in fact, this is the person, he's... And he is going over the edge of the roof. We... <laughs> This guy has not only turned into a, uh, you know, was a Mario Andretti, but uh, a Spider-Man as well. We're not sure how he's getting down the side of that roof. We're trying to maneuver the chopper around. Jumped or scaled or roped his way down. We're not sure how he got off this roof, but officers are at least looking, and there he is. You can see someone down at the bottom moving. Well, maybe he's not moving. Well, perhaps not. You know, uh, he's well, he's moving at this point, but he's clearly... Well, there's an officer there who has this guy, and he has him under control. So this guy must have taken a leap of faith over that wall. Uh, not sure of the drop of these three or four stories, right? And here's the end of the chase here. Now, this, this is the parking garage. You see the man on the left side. Whoa, there he goes, over the edge. And you're at least 40 feet. Okay, because you have the parking garages, and it's at least very closely, and will bring you much more. The entire wrap-up on Eyewitness News at 4 o'clock, 5 and 6. For now, I'm Art Rascone. Thanks for joining us. Now back to regular program. We got for Because they'll possibly need medical attention because we have reports that that suspect may have jumped off of the upper level exactly. of that parking structure. We're going to have a whole lot more on this chase coming up in about three hours or less on Fox 26 News at 5 p.m. was taken from somebody at gunpoint for this murder suspect to flee. Officers have been following this vehicle for close to 30 minutes now. High speeds, our, our helicopter pilot has been having to fly at speeds as high as 110 miles an hour to keep up with this vehicle. Police officers, including uh, HPD and Harris County officers, getting now closer to this, this suspect, closing in on, on the suspect. But there have been a lot of twists and turns. Not a lot of close near misses, as yeah. you might expect at this hour, mostly because uh, the suspect has certainly stayed out of the uh, city of Houston itself. Yeah, he's been in, now in a predominantly rural area here out there in the northwest side, but still headed westbound here on 90. Whoa, Whoa there he is, slamming his brakes and slamming into that red pickup truck. He's, it looks as though the car and is smoking. And I yeah, see. it's uh, the airbags went off, and there John he is Ralston jumping out. 90, jumped out of the on car. On the run now, here we go, and the police, of course, are going to be chasing him.
there he is. And there goes there the, the, officer. the officer. And now he's down on the ground. Uh, he's given up at this point because he just laid himself on the ground. Because he fell. <laughs> it looks as though he's giving up because he because tripped he fell, and fell. Yeah. And, okay, uh, the gun to the head. I mean, you know, they're serious about this guy, of course. Yeah. You can see him. Well, again, he's believed to be armed and dangerous and a murder suspect and a carjacking suspect. Right. So if all of that information that we got earlier proves to be uh, the information the officers have, you certainly understand why they're being very aggressive with, with this suspect who has been fleeing for about in excess of 30 minutes now at very high speeds on several freeways, Beltway, I-10 East, 90, um, for the last, like, as I said, about 30 minutes or so. Well, a dangerous suspect indeed, in, in the words of police. And uh, we understand from our producers that just as he jumped or fled the vehicle, we've been told that perhaps he may have thrown something. I saw something black roll onto the ground. I did see that. Okay. I couldn't tell, because we were trying to watch him too. It looks like blood there on his, on his uh, t-shirt. But yeah, I couldn't tell exactly what that was. And again, I, I'd be speculating to say, you know, perhaps yeah. it was a weapon of some sort because they believe that he was armed, but it really could have been anything inside that car. It could have been a shoe that fell off. Yeah. You know, he, he's, he appears to be fairly, fairly dormant at this point. I wonder if, if perhaps he knocked himself off when he fell on the ground. We're going to show you okay, again is, yeah. the, how this uh, Slow chase this. ended uh, as he hits a car right there, the pickup truck. There it is. Now watch when he gets out and see what happens if he has something with him or perhaps throwing something. There it is. Yeah. Something fell. We're not quite sure what that is. I still or can't perhaps tell what it is. He threw something. But Again, there he, is. he threw oh, something there, there. A secondary he thing is thrown. Right. Yeah. He threw something there. Again, this. So two black objects. Off armed suspect and dangerous and again and there that, you have it and that was just earlier and this is how it looks right now that is a live look there at uh, john walston where this police pursuit has just ended all right that's it for us uh, for now on this breaking news story